thanks for that. Thanks for the opportunity to talk today, especially on my birthday. It's all very exciting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we've got a long-standing relationship of working with the Cardiff FC Foundation, and um, we really wanted to um, have a collaborative approach to developing an impact-led strategy for the work that they do. And that really involved kind of three key areas, and one of them was a theory of change development, then we moved on to an indicator framework, and then a measurement tool bank. Um, we also um, provide the online system views where they capture all of this data. But I think the important thing is to kind of highlight the culture shift that came along with this piece of work and, and how the insight and the data actually shaped development and, and progress of the work of the foundation. So just to say a little bit about substance, so a lot of people in the room know who we are, some people may not, but we're a research and technology company. We were established in 2005 and we predominantly work with charities in the sport for development sector and health and youth sectors. So we really try to help organisations tell the story of the work that they do through really robust and compelling data. And um, we allow them to tailor their delivery really in terms of responding to the needs of their communities and understand what outcomes it's likely are going to happen because of the piece of work that they design. So we help organisations measure success against really important um, programme aims and objectives. And rather, we want to step away from the, we've been asked to collect this piece of evidence for a funder. We want to allow organisations to understand what's important to them and their communities so that they're, they're designing programmes of work and interesting um, activities that are relevant to their uh, participants, but really it's to allow them to have a case of future investment as well and be sustainable in the sector. And, um, yeah, some examples of um, some of our key current clients, and I think we've got some in the room today. So, obviously, we've got Street Games we work closely with, um, Swansea City Community Trust, um, English um, Football League, um, Ospreys as well. So, yeah, a range of organisations, not all in the sport for development sector, but predominantly in, in that sector. And, yeah. Over to me. Yeah. Uh, Pranham Dalpal, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, I guess it's my job to tell you a little bit about the foundation and who exactly we are and, and what we do. So, Cardiff City FC Community Foundation, I know it's not the snappiest of titles, uh, but we're a registered charity and we're the official charity of Cardiff City Football Club. The reason why we exist, well, Substance really helped us to get to that and develop our ultimate goal, which is around supporting children, young people and families to achieve their full potential. And I'll come on to that a little bit later on through our theory of change model. In terms of how we do that, we do it all through using the unique appeal of the football club brand. We're extremely lucky and extremely privileged. It's such a powerful tool to engage with those that may not otherwise engage with some of the services that we offer whether they're traditional services or other providers that they, they don't know about or haven't had great experiences with in the past. So that football club brand is, is so powerful to us and, and is a real hook. In terms of our outcomes, we work towards three key outcomes, and those include supporting people to lead healthy and more active lives, improving people's opportunities to access education and employment, and reducing the likelihood of offending and reoffending. And we do that across five key programmes, which again I'll come on to a little bit later, which at one stage was 45 and extremely difficult to manage, especially being programmes director. Uh, but we've now managed to get that down to five again with the support of substance. And if I can speak honestly and freely, I've been at the organisation for 11 years now. And for a large proportion of that time, I just felt like I was on a bit of a hamster wheel and did loads of stuff. And we counted loads of stuff because we had views, but we didn't know why we were doing it. So we had all this data and all this information, but no way in which to use it. Because we didn't know what we were trying to achieve as an organisation, and we didn't know the reason as to why we existed. So that leads us on to the part of our journey which uh, we work closer with Substance, already involved with them through the, the Views Impact reporting platform. And they supported us with trying to find ourselves a little bit and find out why we do exist, and they supported us with the development of our five-year strategy, City is One, that we launched in 2017. 
So it's probably now a good time to pass you on to Kath, who's going to tell you a little bit about the journey and the steps that we, we took towards getting us towards this more outcome-informed approach. So in order to help get off the hamster wheel, we um, first of all came and developed a theory of change. And I think you know people are probably very familiar with that term, but it could be logic model, could be plausibility framework. But it's essentially a way in which we can visually describe the, um, the way in which the organisation is seeking to make a change from the initial problem that exists in the community to their central aims as an organisation. And it was a really good opportunity to get key stakeholders and key people in the room to develop a sort of a collective but unified um, approach to what it is they're doing at the foundation. Um, common understanding of the long-term goals in agreement, really. And it was important to step back from it and just understand why we're doing this work and you know, why is it we've designed these programmes around these key areas and try to understand what the intermediate outcomes need to happen for us to, in order to get to the central aim. And, and then really consider what resources we might have and what activities we might want to do. So it's a bit of a mapping exercise, but it sort of visually allows us to see quite instantly you know, the whole array of work that we're doing and sometimes look at gaps and look at where there may be areas of work where we need to kind of look at. So it's testing the assumptions. So speaking to the foundation and saying, OK, if you're going to work in this way, um, this will happen because of these logical assumptions of is it based on evidence it can we you know stand up in front of people and say we are doing this so it was really kind of testing the foundation really and pulling apart the work that they do and in the end of that we've got a, a a neat model which really kind of you probably won't be able to see it there but from the left it's an identified problem and the problem here is the impact of inequality on health, education, employment outcomes in South Wales. So that was the problem that um, the foundation felt that they really wanted to address. Um, the goal here was that more children, young people and families in South Wales achieve their full potential. Now we realise that that's you know, an overarching huge thing to impact on and we need to break that down into kind of realistic and achievable and measurable um, outcomes. And so we've got the long-term outcomes and then the intermediate outcomes. And then we look at the activities so that we can start to see where the work that we're doing actually fits in along that journey and where there might be need for further developmental programmes to be kind of designed. So once we've got the um, outcomes frame of the theory of change um, model, and you know, what I'll say about that is it is kind of evolutionary and the changes and the things that maybe add to it at different times. It's really important then to think about developing an indicator framework because we want to really consider kind of what are the success factors. So if we are going to be measuring outcome one, which is healthier, more active lives, you know, what would success look like and what measures are important to us? So there may be um, KPIs that certain funders might be looking for, but there may be things that we think are really important under that heading that we want to try and kind of measure. So, for example, um, the third one, reduce rates of offending. You know, indicators of success for that might look like increasing opportunities in participation in safe environments, safe activities in high crime areas at times where you know we know crime occurs with a certain population. <coughs> So it's kind of driving our delivery um, through with our outcomes focused model. And the level, I'd say the, the levels of measurement really move on to this next, but there's three kind of key areas that we might want to measure the indicator framework. And you know, there's lots of public data, there's um, third party data that we can make, you know, interrogate and look to that doesn't involve the foundation going out and collecting, but we are going to use it. Um, an indicator of success, so we might look at public health data, we might look at crime statistics, we, we might look at the um, supporting the active lives data for our certain areas. <clears throat> and then there's like the management data that you'll all be collecting in terms of programme delivery, so you know where you're delivering, who to, you've got registers, numbers, all your output data and basic management tool data. And then the third thing we looked at was the assessment data, so this is like really you know, building an assessment of the outcomes that our, uh, our beneficiaries are hopefully going to achieve. 
And that's when we come to the third stage, which is really about developing a suite of measurement tools. And um, those tools varied, and I'd, I'd say, you know, um, some of them are validated tools that are, have been used across sectors traditionally for a long period of time and are standardised measured. Some are things that the foundation have been using and are really good examples of um, you know, accurate measurement tools. And then there were some that we just decided to pilot in, in a way, you know, just making sure that they were age and audience appropriate. And what happened then was we created this huge bank of questions into this question bank so that people in the team could say, you know, I'm delivering this piece of work and I think it might have these outcomes. You know, I'm going to choose two or three of these questions because I know that they've been looked at and you know had a robust kind of approach towards developing developing them. So we didn't say, here's a huge bank of questions. Can you go and ask every single young person that comes through your door? But it, it was there really as a, a bank of of really re reliable data. And then from we spoke earlier about the, the Views platform, so um, Cardiff have got Views, but what we did then was we went away and kind of conf configured their account around their new framework so that they could try and develop um, more meaningful um, data around how they're reaching their organisational goals. Um, the question bank questionnaires sit within that framework as well, and maybe Sam, you can say a bit more about that. Yeah, of course. So, uh, in terms of the system, we use that for all of our data anyway, in terms of capturing our quantitative data, but also our qualitative data now. Um, so, it's really straightforward, all the questionnaires are in the system, and as soon as the, the young people or beneficiaries that we're working with answer those, at the click of a button, maybe a couple of clicks of a button, we can actually get a report come out of the system from that to show that the difference that we have been making to these people. So it's been really functional for the team. It keeps all of our data in one place. We were talking earlier about trying to consolidate where we've got all our data being held, obviously with GDPR, but also just staff sanity. Um, so this was a, a, a real welcome addition for us and moved us away from bits of paper and, and other such ways in which we were capturing the difference that we were making to people's lives. So, Kath started off right at the top of the presentation talking about the change it made in terms of culture to the organisation. And there's probably some people in the room that can sort of back me on that, that, that I've known for quite some time, um, that they've really seen a genuine difference in the team and the way that the team talk about the work that the organisation do. Not that the team would talk ill of the work of the foundation, but there's a lot more clarity over what the organisation does. People are able to, to better communicate not only our work that we do and the difference we make, but also talk about the people that we made a difference to. So there's a couple of key things I want to highlight on this really as part of our journey, is that we set out not because our funders are becoming more outcome focused. So some of our largest funders, yes, they do really want to see the tangible difference we're making to people's lives, and understandably, based on their investments. But as a learning organisation, this is a journey that we wanted to take because leading into my next point, we got to a stage where people didn't know why they were doing the jobs they were doing. We didn't know why we were offering the programmes we were. And we couldn't even tell ourselves the difference we were making to people's lives, let alone funders, which is extremely tricky in the current climate, particularly in the third sector, where everyone's sort of competing for, for, for funds to go and have impact. So we really did this for ourselves, and not just to, to appease the needs of the funders. And where it got us to is it allowed us to, to really simplify our offer and simplify our work. So I, I started off in the initial slide saying that the organisation offered 45 programmes across multiple work streams, probably around three to four years ago. We then were able to shrink that down to around 30 or so, and now, we're just meeting with our board tomorrow for final sign-off, we're going to be running five programmes <coughs> moving forward, looking to deliver three outcomes. How much more comforting is that for our staff team to be able to talk to potential stakeholders about the work of the foundation? I found myself trying to talk about all 45 in conversations, but now talking about those five and talking about the outcomes, it certainly makes it easier for our team, and hopefully we can communicate the impact a lot easier as well. In terms of the development of this though, um, the, the first thing I want to say is that it, it really has got to be meaningful. 
So we hear a lot of words like collaboration and consultation and frustratingly they, it is becoming a little bit lip service I feel for people. Whereas if you want to do something around outcomes it really has got to be a meaningful process and it's got to engage a number of stakeholders along the way because otherwise you're going to end up finding yourselves just refining and refining time and time again and end up with something that's not meaningful of what people want. So the first one was uh, staff engagement. So we consult with and we engage with our staff during our process of measuring the outcomes, asking are these the right outcomes we should be measuring? Are these the differences you feel like you're making day to day? And these are the questions we should be asking our stakeholders. We then took that to our stakeholders for consultation through things like our advisory groups that we have, um, both our strategy and also the questionnaires that we're using, saying, does this look like the organisation that you're working with? Does this feel like the type of question that our beneficiaries would want to be asked from us? Would they feel comfortable being asked these things by us? Particularly around some pretty tricky areas such as looking to reduce offending and reoffending. And then the final one, and most importantly, was our beneficiaries, the people who were going to be, we were going to be demonstrating the difference that we made to over time. So saying to them, do you feel the foundation is making this difference to your life? Do you feel comfortable asking these questions? Can you help us shape this? And we had some really interesting insight back from the beneficiaries saying, our oh, questions are rubbish, questions are too long, there's too many questions, I don't understand it. Which took us back to the drawing board on some, uh, which Kath helped us out with. But it was a really worthwhile process because it was meaningful and the product that we've ended up with is representative of what all these people on here feel comfortable with using on a day-to-day -day basis. And finally, I've got probably four minutes left now, um, but I want to tell you a story about a young man called Geordie, because I think it's always really worthwhile to bring these things to life. Um, and Geordie's a really useful reminder of what we're trying to achieve as an organisation, and what much of us are trying to achieve within this sector and making genuine differences to people's lives. So Geordie's uh, a young man, he's 12 years old, and he's got cerebral palsy. He was diagnosed with CP from a, from a very young age, and understandably he's faced a lot of barriers as a result of this. Uh, he's had multiple operations, has been through multiple recoveries as a consequence, and more recently ended up having to learn how to walk again. Geordie's uh, been a participant on our disability project within the foundation for a number of years now, and I really want to try and use Geordie's story to illustrate some of the theory of change that Kath touched upon earlier. So, in terms of the process, obviously um, it was quite, it wasn't easy, but in terms of getting to our problem, we know that people like Geordie will face inequalities. Having a disability, it might be an inequality of participation, opportunity, understanding, which can ultimately impact upon his health. So when we were coming up with the theory of change, we were, we were really keen that our work was focusing on those that are feeling the impact of inequality, but specifically looking at health, education and employment. From that problem then, we thought, well, what's the solution that we want from this? What is our ultimate goal? So that's where we looked at, well, what we really want from this is more children, young people and, uh, children, young people and families, specifically in South Wales, achieving their full potential. And where Geordie fits into this is Geordie, at this moment in time, had the potential to face uh, some, some challenges around his health based on inequalities brought around due to his disability. So we knew that we wanted him to achieve his full potential. And we knew that in terms of that long-term outcome and what we really wanted to achieve with Geordie in the end was him leading a healthier, more active life. And one of the differences that we knew we could make to Geordie in that respect was by increasing the amount of physical activity that he participated in. And there's another one that links in there around life skills, which we also worked on with Geordie. To do that, we put on regular weekly sessions for Geordie, pan-disability sessions, where we could participate in activities with, with other young people living with a disability. And the way in which we made that happen was through taking the insight and evaluation through focus groups from children, from parents, from experts in the area to make sure that our offer was right. Making sure we had the right people that would allow us to demonstrate that impact. Making sure we got the right partnerships to make those referrals into us. And ultimately, and in Geordie's case, what made the biggest difference was the brand of Cardiff City Football Club. 
So a young boy with CP coming along on a Sunday morning, working with Cardiff City Foundation coaches in their track suit, going to the House of Sport facility and training where the first team train on occasions. It was absolutely massive for him. And what that helped us to do in terms of capturing these outcomes then is we were able to make a difference to Jordy in terms of his physical activity. So he was able to take part in more physical activity. We were able to improve his life skills. So we reported back feeling more confident, feeling more resilient, put in his own words, and better able to deal with challenges that life would throw at him. And his mum actually said that, that through the work that's been provided and way in which we've used the insight and the outcomes to shape our work, that Geordie's been given a gateway to sport, activity, and most importantly of all, confidence through the work that we've provided. And from this work, we're still continuing now to try and develop this offer. So from the outcomes information, we're looking at how we can do more of the stuff that works, how we can refine the stuff that doesn't quite work, so that we can make sure that we're not just making a difference or further difference to Geordie, but there's thousands of other young people out there like Geordie. We engage with, on average, 13,000 young people a year. They've each got their own story. And through this work with Substance, we want to continue to have an impact on people just like you. Thanks. Thank you very much.